Well, today I'm going to cover loading a tractor, actually two different tractors. So one over here is an L3200. That's my tractor. We're going to load that on here with the backhoe and the grapple bucket and the standard bucket and a box blade all on one trailer. I'm going to show you how I do that. And then we're going to take this out and drop it off. And I'm going to pick up a smaller a BX series Kubota and put it on here and actually haul it for repairs. A lot of folks have asked me to do a loading video of how I load my tractor on my, tra on my trailer. And the reality is there's not a specific way to do it. Um, and I mean, what I mean by that is it's sort of a principle based operation. You want tongue weight to be distributed on the back of the vehicle so that you don't have the back of the truck lifting up off the ground or having low pressure on the back tires, which means the weight of the tractor needs to be positioned on the trailer in such a way that that allows the tongue weight to be, I usually go for 10% of whatever it is I have on the trailer. Depending on what I'm hauling on my tractor depends on how I load it because I need to get the weight in the correct position. So on a tractor, if you were, if you just had a bucket on the front and a box split on the back, you would want to load that forward because the weight is in the engine and the front loader. And that weight would want to be forward of the axles so that you get the proper tongue weight. In my case, where I put the backhoe on this tractor, that puts a significant amount of weight on the back end of the tractor, which is actually way more than what the front loader has on it. So we're going to actually load it backwards. We're going to drive the tractor onto the trailer backwards and get the backhoe back to put the tongue weight on the tires like it's supposed to and then we're going to reach over the top and grab that box blade and hold that in the backhoe and we'll have more weight up front that's counterbalanced by the grapple bucket and the loader and the loader bucket on the front so the idea is positioning the tractor so that you get the proper levelness and in turn tongue weight on your truck that's sort of the principle make sure that the tongue weight is good for the vehicle you're using to tow and the trailer is rated to do what you need to do. Uh, you'll see on my trailer, I have lots of tie down points. I have uh, stake pockets, which you can use with chain. Uh, I have uh, tie down loops all over the place. And that gives me the ability to tie down at the proper angles, uh, the tractor, depending on how I'm hauling it or where it is or what size of vehicles I haul. Cause I, I, I don't just haul my tractor on here. I haul other people's tractor on here and other equipment. There's other links to the description about that stuff on here. A couple other things, a trailer like this is actually a little bit higher than a standard 7,000 pound car trailer, um, which becomes problematic in the loading angle. Uh, so I have uh, bottom out jacks back here. I put these on myself. These are weld on tongue jacks, but I like them better because I can adjust the height of them. But you see how they're off the ground. I've got a good six, eight inches of space under here because I actually want the back of the trailer to drop down. It'll lift up the front, it'll drop down the back and it changes the ramp angle, which allows me to get the tractor onto the trailer. If these were all the way down to the ground, that angle would be too steep and the backhoe wouldn't clear the back of the trailer. You'll see this as I go on there. I'm actually going to use the bucket to push down on the back of the trailer to get it to load up here properly. All that being said, let's get this thing on here and we'll discuss positioning it and we'll talk about how we set the brakes. And in my case, I use chains. I prefer to use chains and chain binders, and we'll go from there. So you can see that the tractor is sitting on the trailer and the trailer is pretty level. Uh, the jacks are off the ground about the same height they were when we started. You saw how far they went down. This is a really complex load in the fact that I'm bringing the backhoe, a box blade, a grapple bucket, standard loader bucket. So it puts a lot of extra weight in places that isn't really traditionally normal. This is pretty uncommon for me to carry this many items at one time. I normally only take uh, the one back attachment and one forward attachment um, but in this case the tractor is actually going out to a piece of property for several months 
and I'll probably actually have to take it out there, unload all this stuff, come back and get a couple other attachments to take them out there again in a second trip. But for the purposes of this, this is how I get it on there. And now I'm gonna grab some chains and we'll actually start at the front of the tractor and we'll chain to the front bumper and down to these D-rings. And we'll do that nice and tight and then we'll back up against those. We'll use the tractor itself, we'll turn it on and we'll back up and set the brakes so that those chains are nice and tight. And then we'll come to the back and we'll put a single chain through one of the D-rings, through the frame of the tractor, down to the other one. I'll use a chain binder to lock that down nice and tight back there. Generally speaking, if the trailer is sitting like I'm almost perfectly flat, your tractor or load is positioned properly. So all that being said, this is a general principle of how to load any given item on a trailer. So for my specific trailer and my application, I end up pulling a lot of tractors and things on here. I have made chains specifically give me a really good ability to move standard tractors around with chains. What I've done is I've taken a longer set of chains and I've made two five footers. So these are two five foot uh, chains with chain hooks on each end. Most tractors have some sort of bumper or frame attachment on the front and I'm able to hook to that. So in my specific tractor, I have a, a brush guard that's heavy duty steel that's bolted directly to the frame. And there's actually a little notch in that where the chain hook fits perfectly. So you just put the chain hook up in there and it comes from there underneath the frame, underneath the loader. And in this case, back here to this loop. We're gonna make it as tight as we can. Because right now, the tractor has to go backwards. I need to pull this tighter with the, with the force of the tractor to tighten this up before I do the chain binder back there. You could put a chain binder here to where you wouldn't have to move the tractor back and forth. But once you get proficient at doing this, this is actually the fastest and easiest way to do it. Less moving parts, less mechanical stuff, less problems potentially to have with chain binders. A lot of people are afraid of chain binders. They are dangerous. Ratchet style with the opposing Acme thread do work better. They're very expensive. I don't use them. So we're going to put one more of these on the other side. And then we're going to back the tractor up against it and set the parking brake on the tractor. And then we'll go to the back. So this chain hook, you're going to have to forgive my head, comes up and hooks right in there. If I didn't have those notches, I could still go over the top of this. You could go around your axles. I'd highly recommend not doing that. Um, some folks go through the center hole on their front loader that is attached to the frame. Those are all options. I find tying directly into the frame or, or a piece of metal that is bolted to the frame is the best option for me. Once I have that hooked up, I come over here and I run this down. You could go to the stake pocket, right? In this application, you would drop down and come up over the top and hook it like that or directly back to the chain. I like using these welded on D-rings. They work better for me. So I get it nice and snug to the tightest chain link I can get and I secure it like that. While I'm back working around that area, I'm also collapsing down the jack stands and putting away the ramps to make the loading more efficient. So I just put backward pressure. I kept, I kept my foot on the reverse lever or on the reverse pedal while I set the parking brake to make sure those chains stay nice and tight. So on the back of the tractor, I have a 10 foot chain. I made that up. When the backhoe is on here, I run it back through the framework of the backhoe, which is directly attached to the frame of the tractor. When the backhoe is not on here, I run it through the three point linkage which is attached to the frame of the tractor. Making sure that it's attached to something that is attached to the frame of the vehicle or the thing you're towing is really the way to go, in my opinion. We'll run this through. You want your chains in, a, in an angle away from the vehicle uh, to give it the most stability. So I'm gonna go around the other side and put that chain link through the D-ring like we showed you earlier, and then we'll come over here and we'll mess with the chain binder.
when you're putting a chain binder on, you actually want a significant amount of slop in the chain itself. Because that slop is going to end up being taken up by the chain binder itself. So, on a chain binder, you open it up. So if you grab two hooks and you pull apart, the chain binder will open. You want the lever in a way that you can, that you will be able to leverage it towards you because that's easy, easier to do. So positioning it in the proper place on the chain is sort of critical because if the lever interferes with something up here and you can't get it closed, that's not going to do you any good. So I find that putting the first hook close down to the D-ring, just in front of the chain hook, is usually the best place to start. So that's about three lengths away. We just hook that onto the chain. Make sure it's levered correctly and all the way open. Pull the chain tight and bring the chain hook so we have this amount of slack, this extra chain between the two binders, between the two chain hooks, excuse me. I try and get the chain binder kind of laid out so everything is nice and in line. And then we leverage this down. Now, I use a cheater bar. So this is a two foot piece of steel pipe. I think it's actually old fencing. It slides over the end of the chain binder and it gives you a significant amount of more leverage. The fact that I can close this binder to almost three quarters closed with almost zero effort means it's not tight enough. So it needs to go to one more chain link in order to get it tighter. You can go either direction if you have space. So in this case, I'm just gonna go down one more here. Gives me a little more slack on the chain. Reposition everything. At about halfway closed, which is what that is right there, when I click this in place with this cheater bar, it will put significant backward pressure on the tractor. So, cheater bar is in place, nice and secure. Chain binder is locked in place. I am now pulling against the frame of the tractor from the front with the backward pressure and I put a significant amount of force. You probably saw the tractor lurch back slightly. Now that we've got that in place, we're going to take this piece of string, which is through the hole on the chain binder, and we're going to tie it around the chain. This would just, just, just gives you that extra bit of satisfaction that you know that chain binder isn't going to pop loose going down the road. This one's so tight, there's no way it would, but safety is always paramount when you're hauling something over a freeway or any road. So I've pinched the front loader closed around that bucket so it's not going to go anywhere. We're going to go ahead and relax the hydraulics now, which put more downward pressure And we're going to relax the hydraulics back here. This way I'm able to now determine if I have any loose items that have a potential to come loose on the tractor as I'm driving down the road. The brake is also set. I'm going to go ahead and turn the tractor back on and reposition this back hole a little bit. I want to get the box blade sitting more flat on the trailer deck. So we repositioned that box blade, got it uh, flat down on the trailer deck. It's locked in with the backhoe. The, bo the backhoe is now also locked in place. So this cannot come out no matter what. I mean, it is locked in there solid. I've actually got so much pressure, I'm putting a slight bend in the bars. It's better to be safe than sorry. Making sure things are flat and safe and secure is really the way to go.
right, so the same principles apply when loading a smaller tractor like this. You can see I've got a lot more space on the front and back, and this weighs significantly less. So when I bring it up on here, I make sure that I'm over the axles. I get slightly forward of that, so the engine and the front loader are slightly forward of my axles, which puts tongue weight on the truck, which makes the trailer tow nicely. We use the five foot chains to go back to the framework of the trailer, or excuse me, the framework of the tractor. We backed against that and set the parking brakes so those were tight. And I ran a 10 foot chain through the back subframe of the tractor and tied it down with a single chain binder. Locked that in place, and this is ready to move down the road. There's no extra loose components on here. Uh, this is going in to be maintenance, and we'll get it back and it'll be uh, all good to go. So you can see the applicability of using the chain system. So even on my larger tractor, I use the exact same setup, the exact same chains. These five footers on the front will allow it to be locked down. Um, you notice how I loaded this one forwards versus when I was bringing my tractor out, I had it loaded backwards because the weight was on the backhoe. So the weight needed to be forward on the truck. And in this case, I need the engine and the front loader and the grapple bucket to be forward on the truck. So we loaded it forward. So there's no one right way to do this. The idea is to make sure that you get the proper tongue weight on the tow vehicle so that you don't have any problems towing. This is gonna wrap this one up. I had a lot of requests to show how I loaded my tractor and I would have the opportunity to load two in one day. This is how I do it, not the way everybody does it, but this works for me. Hope you enjoyed, hope you got a lot out of it.